saw the chat message. Okay, generally yes. Hey guys, uh, today is uh, October 29th, 2021, and we are here together uh, to discuss a latest uh, uploaded archive paper na named Big SSL Exploring the Frontier of large scale semi-supervised learning for automatic speech recognition and by the way um, this is speech and the language technology meetup group uh, this is our weekly paper reading session uh, if you're interested feel free to search the name on the meetup and join us and you will see our uh, discussion uh, weekly uh, schedule uh, and other uh, notifications and uh, uh, my name is Wei um, I've been doing the speech recognition and speech processing for almost 20 years uh, and uh, by the way uh, today's event is sponsored by OlaWave.com um, uh, okay let's start well you can see in the title this work focus on the semi-supervised learning and uh, they have three first officers and and you can see um, they combined pre-training self-training together to get a universal benefit from these uh, big trained models and self trained models and for uh, different uh, downstreaming tasks I think uh, for those of you who are familiar with transformer or not transformer, uh, BERT you can see BERT is based on transformer and it, it uh, has a lot of downstreaming tasks and uh, BERT performed really well and this is what the authors are trying to demonstrate here uh, by, by using these proposed methods uh, especially the pre-training self-training stuff they can do really well on a bunch of downstreaming tasks okay first of all uh, in, during the introduction uh, I think the author talked about the Libri light I guess you can see my um, cursor well, this is a data set I think released last year, maybe the year before last, I think. Uh, it, it is a very large data set, I would say, um, because you, you can see uh, probably the, large, the largest of free available English uh, data set uh, for speech recognition is Libre Speech, which only has 1,000 hours. And this one, Libre Light data set, although it's not transcribe it contains uh, 60 times of the libre speech data okay but these, these also said okay uh, this this is not uh, enough um, what they did they indeed increase uh, the data without label to about a million hours um, yes a million hours about a million hours, which is about uh, uh, one more magnitude compared to the Libre Light data set. Uh, and uh, I think to me, it's really nice for the school researchers and the scientists to share their experimental results for us because uh, people like us or uh, middle sized or small sized companies. Uh, it would be really difficult for us to train a, a pre-training model uh, with the model parameters up to 8 billion parameters you know you, I don't think you can stuff that that model into any of the single GPU card nowadays um, I think uh, before I start I would like to talk about their, their terminologies um, Although their work is great, but uh, I personally think that there, there are lots of uh, improvements need to be done in the writing. 
I guess this is a point of the, the paper re review system. Um, but uh, this paper published last month, we're reading it. I think I, I think I understand um, eighty percent of them, uh, especially the terminologies because I work in the speech industry, so I research. Um, this is why I can understand their work. Okay. Okay. Terminologies. Uh, Pre-trained. Anything called a P models or pre-trained means that they train on the extra data set. You see here, they call it a large and labeled data set. Suppose they are working on the library speech task, okay? They're using some data other than library speech, but without label into the training, okay? Uh, it doesn't mean that they use the library speech data without labels, very confusing. Um, and what is the S model? S means self-train. So what does a self-train mean? In their work, the self-train means suppose you have libre speech, okay? It doesn't mean that they use some pre-trained model or existing model to uh, get a new transcription of libre speech then train it again. No, it's not that. What they meant, meant is they also use an extra data set or extended data set. But this, this, this is a, it's unlabeled. But you may ask, what, what, what's the difference from the self-trained model with the pre-trained model? The only difference is that for the self-trained model, they use a baseline ASR model to recognize what is being said in this, this data set, okay? And then they use the recognize the results, I mean the text, as the transcription of these unlabeled data sets and they regard them as a uh, labeled data set and use that for training, okay? They call this self-train. Uh, I think they, they made this word first time in this work or in their previous work, but I, it's the first time I saw this one. I hope you are with me. I, do, I think I got it clear, okay? And uh, they uh, also talked about uh, three different types of uh, downstreaming training methods. The first one uh, is the how to train the P model, okay? The, the pre-trained model. Uh, the second one is how to do the self-training or the S model, okay, or the PS model. I think uh, there's no S model. This is another thing that's confusing. You may ask, okay, uh, wait, this guy do self-training, but where's the S model, okay? S stands for self-training. Uh, but the thing is, they always uh, do self-training after the pre-training. So it always a PS model, okay? Well, the third part is the fine-tuning with the PS model. What does this one mean? The fine-tuning means, don't get confused with the self-training. Fine-tuning means that they have very certain labels. They have very certain labels of the downstreaming task. For example, libre speech task. Uh, they have uh, 960 hours of transcribed, human transcribed and check the results. And they, they use those results to fine tune or whatever you call that, you know, to, to tune the already trained uh, PS model, okay? And also the papers, uh, um, I would say the, the structure is a little bit uh, different than the common ones. The first, I talk about their key finding because they want to tr attract your eyeballs. Okay. Okay. Uh, about the terminologies, anybody has a question? Okay, look at them. They are with me. Great. Um, the first to talk about the. Uh, the data efficiency. This is another terminology, you know, I think this is another confusing part here. Um, what they mean meant is that suppose compared, that they, what they meant is that suppose you have a model which is large, but uh, there's no SSL, okay, self-supervised uh, self, self training. 
soft supervised training means uh, P model plus S model, okay, or PS model. Suppose there's no SSL. You have to label uh, way more data by human being in order to achieve the performance you can achieve with SSL. So this is they call the, this thing data efficiency. But I think it would be nicer if they can use a little bit uh, longer sentence to explain this, okay? And uh, for the results, you can see. I guess, um, let me stop here. Okay, you see the figure one? On the left, you can see the sorter means uh, a large model without SSL. You can see the yellow dot here. It's about uh, 4.8 4 4 something, uh, yeah. Um, but their result, the blue ones, means the, the SSL plus the large model, okay? They achieve way better results compared with SORTA, way better. I think this is uh, almost like 20% at least a 15% in relative improvement on the WER. This is huge. I mean, this is huge uh, on the voice search task. But there's one thing I have to point out that, you know, um, they did use extra data. Although the, the, the authors are captain, are keeping trying to avoid using the external data or, or open track, something like this. But they, they did use more data than the than the data used in the sorter model okay but although they use more data but those data are unlabeled so it's hard to say uh, whether they did something inappropriate but the good news is that even they use extra data they do not need human labor to annotate those data that's the good news okay and, the, and the, for the Google guys, they can easily pull out the YouTube videos, uh, the common, create common license, the YouTube videos very easily. So it's like a no cost to them, you know, no, no, no human cost to them to um, shift the paradigm to this SL cell plus a large model training, okay? And also in the middle, uh, they showed uh, the results on different downstreaming ASR tasks, which I will try to cover uh, later on one by one, okay? You can see it's for the noise robust distance ASR task, uh, for the general uh, 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 talk transcription task, uh, for the reading, reading uh, for the read speech recognition task. You can see the proposal method, the yellow means the, the, the baseline or the sorter. And the green means, this is not a confusing part here. The green, let me tell you, remember, the green means P model or SSL with only the pre-trained model, no self-training, okay? And the, the blue, blue ones are the pre-trained model plus the self-trained model, or the PS model. So which means one step forward uh, compared to the P model. You can see it beats almost all the, I think it beats all the uh, sorter system, okay? And they also compare uh, their their method with other sorter method on non-ASR task. Uh, well, I think for this one, you can see there's still some, some way to go. But I think uh, the main reason might be their pre-trained model are, are trained on speech, okay? Um, it might be inappropriate to use those pre-trained models for some non-ASR tasks. For example, I think the audio set is audio classification task, right? I think it would be better to train the audio, audio based other than speech based, uh, uh, encoder or embedding. Okay, uh, and uh, the, the figure two shows what? 
you can see for the figure two, here they show, on the left one, they show the data, uh, data efficiency. Suppose you only have 100 hours of uh, uh, voice search data, I mean, human labeled voice search training data, okay? Then, with the help of the um, pre trained pre -train model or a PS model, you can achieve way much gain, a, a, a significant, very, I would say, huge gain from almost 20% uh, to, to, to about, from, from about 30% to down below 7 to 7% 7 something, okay? But the thing is, suppose you have a, a abundant budget in your hand, okay? Say, okay, wait, I, I can't afford to uh, hire human laborers and these guys are good. And then, like Google did, they labeled 24,000 hours of data, which is almost uh, uh, 30 times of the Libre Speech data set, okay? And then, in this case, you still are able to achieve better WER with the SSL model, but this is not that uh, the gain is not as significant compared with the hundred hours or or a thousand hours. Okay, and also they they tried. Um, uh, you can see the different models. Uh, with different the number of size of the parameters, they, they would say, suppose you have a lot of data, okay? Suppose you have a 34,000 hours data. The gain you got from using a, a, a bigger model diminish, diminish or reduced or suppressed compared to the case with which you have a smaller data set. Uh, so I think, you know, this is a good news for us because suppose we cannot train a huge, you know, like a GPT or BERT model, whatever, uh, robot, how this type of model. But suppose you, and then you can just uh, leverage this uh, pre trained model and then uh, train a, a, a medium sized model, which probably is uh, still doing well, okay? Go ahead, please. Um, you mean acoustic models? I haven't, sorry. Terrific. Okay, but you know what? I'm I'm none of these authors. Uh, I'm only trying to interpret the, their 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 work in an understandable way to people who are not in the speech industry or a beginner of the speech research, um, and uh, also I, I, or to some advanced uh, uh, researchers. Who doesn't have time to read the paper okay because this paper is not easy to read i think there the terminologies are confusing uh but but uh, you know this thing also surprises me okay uh why using a pre-trained model reduce the necessity of the, the the super large model okay especially shown on the right of the figure too okay this is interesting but I, I know these authors. These authors, they, they are busy. They cannot come here today. But I, I can share the the link, uh, the pointer to the author, and ask uh, them. If I got answer from them, I can share with you, in the meetup group or in the bulletin board or something. Okay. Now I think it's super. Um, uh, I I would call it mind blowing to share with you the data they used for pre-training, okay? What these guys are doing, they pull up, uh, you can see here, a one million hour unlabeled data set. <laughs> uh, 
this is mind blowing, man. Um, I can never imagine one million hour. I think I don't know how many hours I have in my life, you know, on a on an expectation basis. You know, this is probably longer than my or most of people's life expect expect expectancy. Okay. Called a YouTube you, okay. And this is interesting. It means suppose you're a human being, right? Then then at age of suppose you're at age age of fifty or sixty, and then you think, okay, I have a, I have listened to up listen up to enough an amount of in, different English sentences, okay, recordings, you know, people with accent. I think I might be doing well in uh, recognizing what are people people saying, okay, understanding them. But the thing is that Google people now they are able to. Uh, train a model with more data than the people can ever see in his lifetime uh, to see whether they can achieve the human parity or the, the, the recognition accuracy of human being and whether is that does that mean they can supersede human being because you can if you look at, see the previous papers or works None of them are using training set um, that large, you know. Um, I think this is very interesting. Okay, um, I think I shared with the, the, the ASR talks, uh, especially. I think I think they should write a, a little bit more about the voice search part because this is the bread and butter of the speech team at Google because this one makes money. And they spend an extremely amount of uh, dedicated efforts on optimizing the recognition accuracy of the voice search data set. Okay. Uh, I'm talking about the algorithm. Uh, don't be worried about the algorithm. Okay. Um, there's not, not not a lot of math stuff here. Uh, first of all, I guess. Whether you're familiar with conformer or not, it's okay. As long as you know the transformer, uh, what I can tell you that this is not accurate, okay? But don't tell other people, okay, wait, tell me conformer is this. You can just imagine that uh, conformer is a transformer that adds convolutional neural networks in the encoder. If you see the figure left, Figure three on the left, you see, if you see uh, uh, the traditional or the standard transformer, I don't think there's a convolutional subsampling or convolutional layer here, okay? Is there? Or the conformer block, okay? If conform the, the conformer blocks. There's no conformer blocks here. The, the only thing they add is some uh, convolutional stuff uh, here. And the uh, is con convolutional plus transformer, they call it trans conformer, okay. Uh, but this, my understanding is only for you to understand, okay. It's, it's very uh, imprecise. I recommend you to read the conformer paper. And the, and the wave to back 2.0. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with, with the wave to back 2.0, I can I also have a very simple but not accurate understanding, um, uh, which is, um, imagine you, you know, you know Bert, right? Um, you can imagine the wave to back is the bird for wave, uh, uh, for, for speech. Uh, it trains a, uh, uh, a, uh, uh, audio embeddings. The audio embedding is trained by, uh, leveraging a contrastive loss. The, co how does the, the contrastive loss, uh, works? Um, basically it tries to, quantize the wave samples. You see, the input, the wave to back, because it's called wave, okay? It starts from the raw waveform, but there are too many samples in the raw waveform. So what they did is they, they first quantize the waveforms, samples, into code books. Then they are using the similar MLM, master language model techniques that was leveraged in the BERT model and they're trying to uh, use a contrastive loss to see if the 
learned encoder or pre-trained model can recover or re-estimate or uh, recover the raw waveform uh, the, the raw waveforms codebook by using like, this contrasted loss okay and uh, you can see that uh, they uh, tried this uh, conformer model with like identity size called g 8 billion parameters i don't think it, I, my, my, my computer can do this but this is a super large but I think they can go even larger. I think for Google, this size is not that super large. I think they can go bigger. Uh, and also another terminology, which is called uh, noisy student training. I think this is not confusing. You can check check the, the private publication paper. Basically it's, um, so, this is not self-training, but okay, man. The their their text I think need to be improved. This day they're talking about knowledge distillation, okay, or transfer learning, or teacher student uh, training, okay. So suppose you have a very large model called a conformer gigantic, okay, with pre-trained model, super large, and then what you want to say, okay. This model too big. I cannot deploy in my V100 GPU, or suppose even you want to use it on the CPU or on an edge device, a mobile phone. Too big, right? Then you want to see, okay, uh, can I do transfer learning to to learn a smaller student model? Definitely, you don't want to train the model, the student model, from scratch using the data, right? You want to set up a uh, transfer learning framework. In their paper, they call this thing as noisy student training. Why? Because they are in this transfer learning. Even they are doing this on the downstream tasks. Okay, and the downstream task data may have uh, label data, but they are using some other data. Okay. In, indeed, suppose they are the their downstream task is delivery speech. A hundred, a thousand hours of transcribed speech, right? They want to train a student model for degree speech. Indeed, uh, they do not use the, the these type of data, the, these uh, these uh, human label data. Instead, they they got some uh, so, uh, unlabeled YouTube data set data, and uh, they used the, the already trained uh, teacher model which is a super large model, to transcribe, automatically transcribe these and label the YouTube data set and generate, they call it pseudo labels, okay? And then use this uh, data with transcription to train the student training. Uh, uh, please uh, turn off your microphone if you're not asking question, okay? Uh, I think um, I might be able to do it. Let me try. Um, I, I, uh, I think it's Jacob, right? Is it Jacob? Okay. Uh, can you still hear me? Okay, uh, and another interesting thing, I don't think it's uh, new, but they're doing some ad hoc thing here. This is called confidence per word matter. So that means uh, they're not fully trusted their uh, pseudo labels. They're using this thing to filter out those labels with a low confidence score, means uh, re the recognizer is not searching about something. But this, I, I have a question about this. Um, what well, this means that, you know, your student model is trained in the teacher's favorite way, you know. Um, and the, the, the student won't be able to learn well 
or, or even the, the student doesn't have a chance to learn, the teacher doesn't know, okay? Because you throw away all the audio recordings that the teacher, uh, which, is a, which is not certain about, okay? For all the audio recording that the teacher is not certain about, you throw away them. But I think, according to my experience, it's super important um, to have human being to label those um, recordings uh, that has a low competence score in the first pass speech recognition because those ones are uh, extremely difficult to recognize. Um, but, uh, but I think that, that the point is that, you know, um, I don't want any human being involved in this uh, tedious or time-consuming, inefficient data labeling task, okay? And I will, if they want to see, okay, I just want to use these pseudo labels from the teacher model, okay, and see how well I can do in the student training. Uh, I think this algorithm is pretty easy to understand. Um, and also, um, uh, what they're talking about here is interesting. They're talking about, okay, um, so this means that for the, the, for the choice of the teacher model, they can either use um, uh, the super large the model, or, or per train model, okay, uh, with lots of data. They can use a small model that's just to train on this labeled data set, for example, in speech, you just use the model trained on the 1,000 hours as a teacher model to start with, okay? But remember, it's not the start of, they, they're, they're making you confused again. Uh, you may think, oh, the teacher model is just a train with a thousand hours of libre speech data. No, it's not. <laughs> it's trained with a thousand hours of data together with their pre-trained model, okay? The pre-trained models are trained on thousands, uh, hundreds of thousands of hours of uh, labeled YouTube data, okay? <laughs> and they, they said, you may ask, okay, can I update the teacher model? Uh, this is a good question, uh, but uh, the, the author said they didn't update the teacher model. This is why they call that uh, they only proceed one generation, okay? But it would be interesting to see what if you have time and you want to do multiple uh, uh, generation of this NST training. Uh, section D, uh, uh, man, I, I think I cannot uh, understand this because <laughs> <laughs> what, what uh, I know sharding okay um, but this is definitely involved with some um, uh, uh, infrastructure for uh, deep learning stuff so I'm not familiar with I will just skip this um, I think data processing is uh, very similar pre-training the learning rate stuff I will skip that uh, and also I think you for those of you who are not familiar with speech recognition, you might want to check this this word called uh, spectral augmentation. I think this is a very good word. It uh, helps to improve the end-to-end -end speech recognition accuracy uh, significantly. And that here they talk about the, the how they uh, split up the uh, almost a million hours of uh, YouTube data into uh, uh, three tasks. Uh, three, sorry, three, three, three portions. So the first portion is called a YouTube L. L, I guess they, 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 they first say, okay, this is called label. Why do you call it weekly label, okay? Uh, because you know, the YouTube, uh, uh, YouTubers, they upload their video. Sometimes they upload the transcription with it, you know, the food, food the channel, you know, they have this type of uh, cuisine names, they, they upload it, so the YouTube can show them while they're playing it. But they call this weekly label. I think this is a very, uh, this is a very nice word because they're weekly label. Because lots of time, you know, the YouTuber, they have lots of hesitation, uh, repetition, or even they omitted some word. But, but in order for the watchers to understand their video, they tend to put 
a uh, different or more like a written format or the, the transcription onto it. So it's not a, exactly aligned with the audio, right? So they call it weekly label. And also they have uh, 500 K hours of a pseudo label. Pseudo labels means that they have a seed or initial teacher model. They use the teacher model to uh, label, transcribe this unsurpassed a long audio. Although we may say, um, uh, do these audio have transcriptions? Yeah, some of them may have, but the authors uh, didn't use them because they may think, okay, these audios, uh, because their their confidence score uh, is low, I I'm not gonna use them. I would more trust on my pseudo labels, okay? <clears throat> and finally, they have everything here, okay? This is called unlabeled audio, everything here, okay? Well, I think, um, yeah, that, that tells you what they're saying. Okay? You see the YouTube T. I think the T means transcribed. <laughs> uh, L means labeled. U means unlabeled, okay? So it helps you remember this. L, labeled, T, transcribed, U, unlabeled. So for the YouTube T, transcribed uh, by the ASR, you see the tra provided transcripts of the set are discarded because why? I think uh, they talk a little bit about it and I agree with it because uh, lots of time the transcription, uh, even uploaded by the uploader, are, are very low quality. Um, and uh, it's not suitable for training. So uh, using a teacher model might get a better pseudo label. And uh, if suppose you're interested, uh, you can check the uh, categories and the distribution of the data. Okay. And here, I think this part, I like their, their part here. This is very nice. You know, they, they gave their model naming protocol, the, how they name their model, the size, like the t-shirt size and the decoder. Um, Decoder, I think mainly the CDC or RMT, roughly the same in terms of accuracy. Uh, it's not a big deal. Um, and the preparation, so you can see what I meant, the P pre-train, PS pre-train, okay. everything's here. First, let's uh, just look at the table, okay? I think it's hard to check the, the text line by line, but I will start with the table, okay? The SOTA result is the previous result uh, published, uh, uh, I think this is for the English, I'm sorry, I forgot which data set this is. Okay, I think this is a YouTube test they said. Okay, they're testing the accuracy on the YouTube. A SOTA data set is a previous public result Baseline means they train a conformer RNT model, but without pre-training. Uh, I don't know why their baseline is better than the SOTA, so I, it's way better. I don't understand. Um, then they tried the pre-trained model, okay? You see the pre-trained model, the P here. So you can see uh, this got a little bit worse, but uh, uh, suppose your model gets bigger, you get a better result right and uh, what really works is they get a soft training so this i think the soft training the, the nice thing of this is uh, besides using more uh, labeled data uh, they, they thought okay our model is good because you know their seed model is you can achieve an accuracy over 90 percent okay then okay i think uh, they say okay I trust the WER result with high confidence score from my seed model and I use them as a pseudo label and I start the self training. So you can see they do better, way better. I think this is like a 10%. Very significant. Well, this is a, a very eye opening result, okay? Especially, I think another interesting result if, thing, if you notice that, you know. 
is that for this a large amount of data, that the CTC loss worked actually better than the RNT based model. As we all know that, you know, for a small amount of data uh, or for supervisor training, uh, RNT works better than CTC. Yeah, but see, they, they, still, they, they also didn't talk about why. Uh, any questions? Okay, I have to speed up a little bit. Um, and you can see uh, the sorta, this one is, uh, yeah, the sorta, this one is better, yeah. I think the, the other thing is that the, the, the authors are, are keepy repeating their 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 stuff in their paper so i think this is sometimes um it's get confusing yeah this is my question uh speech too um uh, i frankly speaking i'm not a personal fan of speech too because it doesn't make sense to uh, combine so many data of different uh, settings or recordings together and uh, these data sets are not large enough you know I prefer the supervisor YouTube data. So I would probably skip the speech to data. And another thing I skip that was because um, I think those results are not very, um, the training set is small. So I wouldn't trust this very much because you, the speech to data is uh, like uh, no more than 10,000 hours of data. You know, you train a prediction model on this size, it's not very convincing to people like me. Uh, chime data, okay. Uh, chime means that uh, you know you, you want to do distance speech recognition or noise robustness speech recognition uh, with a microphone array, you know. Uh, I don't think the, uh, the chime or the noise robust uh, microphone array stuff uh, generates any uh, different conclusions compared to the YouTube data set, okay. Um, I guess I will skip that one. Uh, another one is a telephony. A telephony is interesting. I think this is very interesting. Uh, I think I may have to stop here today, but I will try to uh, uh, say as much as possible. So uh, you have an English uh, telephony task, and the authors they say they want to get good performance on long utterances. Because why? I think uh, there is a general um, agreement in the, not agreement, I forgot. I'm not sure that the exact word. I think there's a general consensus that in the speech community that is that the, there is still some work left to be done for the end-to-end -end model working well on long sentences. Because the, the, the voice activity stuff um, and also when the person is speaking long, because you're doing the RNT, okay? Uh, even you talk for one hour like me, uh, the sample you collected at the very first second still can affect the recognition results at the one hour later, so which doesn't quite make sense. Um, but we were doing some something to this. Um, attention, uh, uh, truncated attention or trunked attention, chunkwise attention. Um, they're trying to see if they can do anything to this. And you can see on the table four, sorry, table six, okay. Test along means uh, telephony test set, okay. You can see they, they have, have a streaming model. model. The, the streaming model, model I believe, I read that word, it's, it's RNT streaming, streaming model, model, okay? And, and then if you see their test are short, uh, it's, it's not very good. good. And, and the test along is surprisingly, it's good, good right? right? And, and they, they say, uh, they, they have some, some they want to fine tune it, okay? It's probably because the baseline is trained on YouTube search data or some other data, okay? And they want to fine tune the telephony task. They have, they have some, some uh, audio telephony data and uh, uh, video telephony, video, video, video conferencing data, data okay? okay? The first thing using all the telephony data to fine tune this. The, the thing, thing is, is, you can see, 
the, 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 the test short case, case short, short average, average the short the telephony data, data is getting way better, better but, but the, for the, the long utterances case, case is getting worse. I don't, I don't think, think the author talk about why. why. Because the, maybe it's because the paper lens constraints. Uh, and then they, they say, OK, okay maybe, maybe I want to give the, the, the video conference thing uh, a weight. weight okay? Okay? They, they increase this a little bit. And they, they found the test short become uh, slightly worse, worse, but the uh, test along gets better. better. But still, is the fine tuning is going in the wrong way for the test along data set. Okay? So, so then they tried up their pre trained model, model, which is really good. I have to say, this is really good. You can see that the pre trained model improved the both. Why? I guess, I guess this is my, my guess, guess, okay. Um, my, my guess, guess is that, you know, the pre-trained model, they're, they're capable of leveraging uh, hundreds of thousands of hours of available data. Uh, although YouTube, YouTube data is not exactly telephony data, data but, you know, there are some long YouTube data, okay, uh, long YouTube recordings. And uh, I think the... Uh, and the, uh, the, the YouTube, YouTube that they, they may contain some, some very noisy channel, channel like the telephone channel. So, so this, this thing might work. work. <coughs> it makes sense to me. <coughs> and then, then the more interesting, interesting thing is that it's, it's really, uh, it's really, really amazing, amazing, I would say. I would not say this is a, um, I would say this is really amazing. So, so if, if they tried to add self-training on top of the pre-training, um, they, they can get even better results after the fine-tuning. You see, this is way better, especially for the long audio. Because, you know, telephony is mostly long. The tough wire, it's hard to improve that long audio recognition accuracy, right? Yeah, this is my note. You can see, this, this is probably, probably like the YouTube, YouTube task. Uh, although, although people are trying to you see the fine-tuned fine task, and you can, can see if they, they tune the, the, the original, original baseline without pre-training or self-training, you, you cannot get better uh, result compared to uh, the, the, the model with the uh, SSL, SSL. Uh, which, which might be because, you know, the, the human laborers is not, not doing a better, better job than the the the, the, the baseline model in terms of uh, ASR. ASR. This, this is probably true, true because you know for telephony, a lot of times we have half word repetition. Um, these type of things. things. It's, it's hard, hard for human laborers, human laborers to get different human laborers to get a consistent transcription, transcription result. Okay. okay. Okay, okay, this, this is, is a voice search. search. I, I think, think this is the most exciting one. one. Uh, uh, let me see, see if I can hook up my uh, uh, power. Okay, uh, I've got, got my power. power. Any, Any questions, questions so far? far? Okay, okay. Let's, let's move on to the voice search part, part okay? Voice search is, is the most interesting part, part, I would say. Although, Although you know, the, the telephony part is very interesting. interesting. Uh, voice search... Um, they first try the English voice search, okay? okay. And... Uh, this, this is this is their conclusion, you know. The, the benefit, benefit is mostly gained from utilizing additional labeled data. Um, I, I wish they, you know, the, the Google search on my Android phone would, would be working better after they launched this work. Um, and, and I think, think this is interesting. interesting. I, think I think they have this uh, conclusion before, before okay? okay? So, so that, that means the large conformer model, model perform worse unless they are pre-trained. What does this mean? 
Now, they, they, they are confusing who are not familiar with this word. word. The, the first of all, you may think, okay, the, the first, if they are say, saying a larger conformer, conformer which, which means, suppose, suppose you have a libre speech, okay, and, and then you want to train a large conformer, for example, a conformer of 36 layers, a 36 blocks okay, or layers uh, for the libre speech, which is super large. It, it does not work well compared to the libre speech task with, with a pre-trained pre model trained from uh, hundreds of hours of uh, and label the YouTube data. data. That's, That's what it, what, it, what they meant. They didn't, didn't mean you should, should train your pre-trained model on the label, label the libre speech data. data. Okay. My computer is freezing. Oh, jeez. I, I don't know why, why my computer, computer is freezing. freezing. Um, I'm, I'm telling you. Oh, I'm, I'm trying, trying hard to scroll up. up. I'm going to wait uh, for, for some time. time. Okay, I guess you can see figure 5. So this is what they meant. Uh, if you train conformer model from scratch without leveraging uh, pre-train method, your WER will go up as you arbitrarily increase your model size. That makes sense, right? You cannot, that's called overfitting. Um, and, and then, then they're, they're also telling, telling you that, that okay, by, by doing, doing the uh, 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 pre-trained pre model, uh, you, you can train a way, way larger parameters, uh, and uh, the, the WER is still, still reducing. Okay. Cross-lingual Cross benefit. benefit. I, I think they, they need more, more experiments. experiments. Uh, but, but the, the one, one, one interesting conclusion, conclusion is that, that um, uh, for, for, for the, the Hungarian, Chinese, Chinese and the Hindi, uh, uh, if, if you, you have, have enough, enough amount of uh, label, label data, data, the, the, the protein model actually uh, is worse than that. that. I, I, I think, think this, this is interesting. interesting. Maybe. The, the pre trained model is trained, trained on English. English. Uh, you know, uh, you, you should, should have, have a pre trained model on that language. language. This, this is, is something, something I, I have a question in my mind. Um, but but the, 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 the author's point, point they're, they're trying the, the, the word. You see, you see that? So sorry, I cannot scroll, scroll back. back. We call it cross lingual pre training. So they want to use a pre trained model. Got, got from, from the English, English and, and see, see if they can apply on um, uh, non English tasks. tasks. Unfortunately, it may, it may not work, work well. You know, if, if you see, if, if the trend, trend goes on, on you see, if, if, if you have more human labeled Hungarian, Chinese, and Hindi data, the, the pre trained model should be work, working, working worse, worse compared, compared to the baseline. Base Upstreaming self training. So, so this is not a terminology. I think upstreaming self training. Um, this, this is exactly self training. Upstream is used to emphasize this is not downstreaming. They're, they're using some label data, data, data to recognize it and doing self training. Uh, downstreaming self training, okay. Downstreaming self training, that means. Um, Suppose, Suppose you have the downstream task, task data, data, you don't trust the, the, the labels uh, done, done by human beings, being, like, like the, I would talk, talk about in telephony uh, task, and, uh, and uh, you just, just use the, 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 the teacher, teacher model, model sorry, sorry, the upstream, upstream, upstream model to transcribe it and uh, do self-training. Uh, 
I think, I think sometimes, sometimes the result gets, gets worse. worse. Uh, I think it showed up here. here. Yeah, yeah, you can, can see that. that um, it's not, not always getting better, better because, because if you see, oh, oh right, right, it's, it's getting, getting better for the voice search task, but some for that, some other tasks, it's not necessarily getting better. Uh, and this, this is interesting. interesting. Um, we're, we're not being able to achieve additional gains on a full voice search, uh, voice search task using downstream AST. AST. Um, because they demand that, that okay. They, they can, can only achieve a uh, gain uh, if, if they do the AST on 100 hours a day and 1,000 hours a day. If they're doing this on the lots of data, like 34,000 hours a day, it doesn't make sense. sense. Okay. So, so what, what does this mean? mean? This means that you uh, suppose, suppose you want to get a good performance of the model using the pre-train model or uh, self train model, model can only improve the data, data efficiency, which, which means you don't have to transcribe that amount of data. data. But what this, this suggests that is that, that suppose, suppose you have good labelers and you suppose, suppose you can label a lot of data, you should, you should go, go for it because that's gonna be uh, that's gonna be uh, better, better than using the pre train model. Okay. Or, or uh, how to say that? Sorry. Sorry, it's, it's going to be better, better than the PS model, model, not the P model. model. Because, because suppose you have a lot of transcribed data, lots of transcribed data, data, lots of lots of transcribed data, data, like the YouTube, YouTube search. search. Using the P model can give you a incremental gain on the accuracy, but the, the self-training would not work, work in this case. case. I think, I think uh, for the time issue, I would skip the non-speech tasks because, because I think they definitely need to write, write another paper on this because I think, I think every result is interesting, interesting but it's a lack of analysis and uh, interpretation okay. okay okay any, any questions, questions by far, far? Are there, are there future, future directions? directions? I think I, 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 I mentioned these things uh, while I'm talking about their paper. Um, yeah, yeah, just so like I mentioned this, this you see, I just, I just mentioned this. this. You, you should, should definitely still uh, label your data set. set. So, so the current, current technology, technology, even the big SSL, is very efficient. efficient. I think it, 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 it is efficient, efficient uh, in, in terms of the, the uh, P model, model pre trained model. model. But, but for the self training, training uh, if, if you do not have human resources to label a lot of data, self training may help. help. But, but if you do have resources, uh, you, you just go for it because self training won't, won't be better than label a lot of data. Okay. I, I, I think. Uh, Okay. okay. This, this is a, a the paper, paper found, found by, by Jacob. Jacob. Um, Jacob, are you able to uh, present this work next time? time? <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Next, Next time, time is yours. I will talk, talk about this uh, after the meeting, okay? Can, 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 can you type your email here? here? Okay. 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 Okay, it's perfect. perfect. Yes, I, I think it's uh, to me. 
um, I, I think I won't, won't be able to replicate their, their results, not because their paper issue is my training infrastructure issue, but I do, I'm do, uh, I am very thankful to them publishing this archive work, um, I think this uh, shed a lot of lights on my research too, and to lots of people's research, because it provides instructive directions on the pre-trained model, self-training, these type of things. All right, uh, uh, if I have, uh, there's, there's no question, question uh, let's, let's stop today. Uh, and then the, the next uh, weekly sharing would be uh, next Thursday, Thursday 7 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. Thank, Thank you for coming and uh, have a nice weekend. Goodbye. Goodbye.